Welcome back to the live extensive coverage that Digital Trends is doing right here at CES in Las Vegas. Hey there, Maud Garrett here. Joining me back at the table, we've got Matt Smith, Senior Editor and PC Expert for Digital Trends. Hey there, Matt. Hey, I'm back again. It is a big day for huge <laughs> announcements and to talk about Razor's secret little project that they've been working on, we've got the Director of Product Marketing Systems, Kevin Sather. Hi, Kevin. Hi. Hello. Look at this thing in front of us. Uh, it looked like just your regular laptop until you look a little bit closer and see that there's a smartphone embedded into it. Please talk to us about Project Linda. Yeah, definitely. So this is Project Linda. It's our concept we're showing off at CES this year. And like you said, the idea was really taking our Razer phone and embedding that into a notebook, adding more functionality to it, namely a larger keyboard and a larger screen. So a really cool idea with the way Android phones are getting a lot more powerful these days, users are doing a lot more with them. And so we wanted to really enhance that experience uh, more for the users. So um, you know, we talked about the, the keyboard being a great benefit, obviously, and the larger screen. We've got some stuff hidden inside also that enhances that experience. So we've got a battery built in there, and it acts as a power bank. So when the phone is docked in the touchpad area, it's actually charging the phone while you're using it. So you actually come away with more charge on the phone than when you went into the scenario. We also have some internal storage in there, so if you want to back up your phone or you want to offload some apps or content to it, more than welcome to do that with the, the storage that's built inside. So it was a really cool concept product to work on. Um, and you know, we had a little bit of an advantage that we have this great Razer smartphone that we launched last November. And we've had our uh, Razer notebooks for over five years now in the market. And there's a lot of design and technical similarities between the two, materials and certain angles of the design. So it was really easy to get such a flush implementation of the phone as a touchpad. Um, that's kind of the basic level. The real concept that we're looking at when we implement this phone is lighting up both screens at the same time and having a second screen available to the user so they could put additional content or information on there um, as opposed to just using it as a touchpad. So adding really a whole other layer of functionality to the Android experience. I love usually with laptops, uh, everything that we're seeing at the moment is two in one. We're mm -hmm. offering two things. You have both a laptop yeah. and a phone. You it have is a literally literal. two separate yeah. things <laughs> yeah. that you can detach. <laughs> it's true, it's true. The docking mechanism, I can show you yeah. that real quick That'd if you'd like sure. to take a look yeah. at it. Let's have a look at this. So, so basically, subtle. we've got a button up here on the side. And that disengages the phone, and then you simply just lift it out of the touchpad area. We've got some nice soft material in there, so you don't get a lot of metal on metal contact. And basically what's going on inside is, and I'll try to do this with my hand there, a USB-C mechanized connector that simply just slides into place and engages with the phone, and then oh, goes back when you're that. ready to undock. Yeah, it makes a really cool little mechanical word. Probably doesn't pick up on the microphone, but it definitely, it, it, it's fun. Hit that button and hear that, that, that sound. Now, the phone, you know, it hasn't been out very long, as you said. Like, yeah, the November pretty, 1st was its launch yeah, date the last, phone is, last um, fall. pretty new for Razer, so it's interesting to see you come out with a concept based on that so quickly. Can you talk, first of all, maybe give a quick, like, reminder about the phone itself and, sure. and what you're going for with that, and then did these two things come you know, sort of together, like as you were in the process of designing the phone, or was it just like an idea that clicked right after you launched it? Yeah, so, so as far as the phone itself, I'll talk a little bit about that. So the Razer phone we launched uh, last November, it was our first mobile device, so we entered a whole new category. And what we were really targeting with that was bringing a device that was the ultimate in mobile entertainment. So we put in some really special features in there. We have a 120 hertz screen. It was the first to have that on a phone. Um, really, really smooth scrolling, smooth gameplay for our gamer fans out there. Um, we also wanted to have a really robust audio experience. So the two speakers that are on the phone on either side um, provide a really immersive audio um, experience for the user, so much so that when we did Project uh, Linda, we didn't have to put speakers in the laptop chassis. We're using the ones that are built into the phone. They're that powerful. Um, so the processor we have in there is Snapdragon 835, 8 gigs of RAM. It's got a lot of performance, and that's kind of what led us down the path of, okay, what else could we do with this much performance in this feature set for the target customer we're going after? We have our Razor Blade Stealth, which is the chassis this is modeled after. Yeah. Very successful ultra portable notebook in our lineup. Um, you know, and it kind of, when you see the two together, they're both CNC to aluminum chassis. They share a lot of design similarities on the outside, um, and they're, you know, engineered uh, by a lot of the same folks on the team. So really, it was almost a no-brainer for us to really try to expand that phone into something else, and that's where the idea for Project Linda was kind of born. Now, 
since this is running off the smartphone, mm -hmm. um, you're running the Android operating system, and mm -hmm. that's going to be on the phone itself, and that's going to be when you have it docked as well. Yes. And uh, Android is not an operating system that was built for a la laptop use from the ground up. So what kind of things are you doing to sort of bridge that gap when mm -hmm. the phone is, ends up being docked? Yeah, so you know, we wanted to be really conscious of that user experience. We wanted to stay true to a lot of the native Android um, stuff that you could do there and, and stay in that environment, but we also wanted to take advantage of the larger screen and the keyboard. So what we did was we looked at the Sentio desktop app, and we worked with them to do a custom version of that. So what you see running on the screen there um, gives you a little bit of more of a traditional desktop interface um, and some really good functionality. So this button right here actually pulls up an app menu. So similar to like a start menu in Windows, you can scroll and access your apps from there. Um, you can also alt tab and switch between applications as well. Um, and you have a lot of the same gestures on the touchpad that you would have on a Windows notebook. So two finger scrolling, pinch and zoom, um, and features like that. So really kind of natural experience for someone to take Android to this kind of physical form factor. It does seem here that the laptop is the accessory for the smartphone, but say the smartphone was out and being used somewhere <laughs> else, is there any way that you can use a laptop on its own? No, I mean, without the, the brains and the muscle of the smartphone in there, it's pretty much uh, just sitting there. The only thing you can really do with it is charge up the internal battery so it's ready to use when you're ready to take it on the road. Um, but no, it's really just an extension of the phone um, in and of itself. I did have a uh, comment here because we are streaming live mm -hmm. on YouTube and Mokajato has said um, if your phone is in the laptop, mm -hmm. do you then use a camera within the laptop to take yeah. photos? Yeah, great question. Um, so, you know, we definitely wanted not to lose any functionality of the phone when you docked it, including the communication side of it. So we know people are doing, you know, voice calls, obviously, they're doing a lot of video calls. So the camera on the phone, the front-facing one, is pointed up when it's docked. So instead of going up someone's nose with that view, we thought it would be better to put one up in the traditional spot above the screen. We also equipped a dual array microphone so you can just um, communicate really naturally. So if a phone call comes in, you can simply answer it. You don't have to fumble for a headset or anything like that. Ray's is known for gaming, obviously. So to do this, can you then use um, third parties like Twitch to be able to stream and record using that, the camera? Yeah, there's a lot of applications in the Android uh, world now that are designed for streaming, live streaming, and um, doing all sorts of content to share with audiences out there. Um, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to kind of stay in the Android environment is there's a lot of apps for, for social um, uh, use in there. Um, so I think for gamers, you know, definitely we see the advantage for Android gaming if you enjoy playing it on a touch screen, but maybe every now and again you want more of a keyboard mouse experience, this is a device that can bring that as well. And with this being actually, you know, the smartphone that's serving as the uh, touchpad, mm -hmm. you can display things on that, and that includes things while you're playing games. I know that you had, you know, a few things in mind as sort of concepts mm -hmm. when you were working on this and how it might look with a game. Can you explain, like, what you would be seeing on that touchpad if you had a mouse hooked yep. up with it and were just using it as sort of a, a screen? What could you see there? Yeah, you know, I mean, the possibilities are really endless. Um, you know, some ideas we've had is obviously if you're in a game, you might want a mini map or you might want your inventory there or maybe a chat lobby so you can see when your friends come online and engage with them. Um, you know, for creative tasks, if you're using Lightroom on Android, instead of having all the tools on the sidebar, uh, encroaching into the image space, make that image full screen and put the tools down in the touchpad area on the phone. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you could take advantage of dual screens. Um, we're no stranger to dual screen implementation. We had our Switchblade user interface for a long time on our Razer Blade Pro. Um, we, we actually moved away from that last year because we wanted to use that space for the GTX 1080 that we put in there. Um, so we've got a lot of ideas um, that we've already executed in prior um, iterations for dual screen, but we really want to hear from the community right now with this concept, what do they want it to do? That'll help us iterate on it more, um, and then we can hopefully make it a viable consumer release sometime. Uh, Robin McLeod, one in the chat here, was just wanting to know a little bit more about how the phone then becomes your touchpad. Mm -hmm. Like, if you kind of fiddled around a little bit in the wrong direction, are you all of a sudden making a phone call that you didn't want to do? No, so when it's in touchpad mode, it literally just becomes a full touchpad and you interact with what's on the screen above and you have a cursor to kind of sense where you are. Um, so there's you know, not a chance of it really um, hitting a wrong button down there and, and, and um, hitting a different app. Um, there's a lot of refinement we have to consider, though, when you put a phone in as a touchpad. Um, for example, palm rejection. You know, we put in this beautiful keyboard for people to type. We also need to be very conscious to make sure that whole experience is something um, that's well thought out. So palm rejection will be really important in that instance. Razer is always known for its beautiful lighting um, in the actual hardware itself. Can you talk me through some of the lighting features that we've got for this? 
Yeah, so we've implemented our Razer Chroma keyboard here. It's the same keyboard we have on our Stealth Notebook with a couple different keys. We put some Android uh, navigation buttons up top here. Put a search button, we already talked about that menu button there. We have voice search as well and a screen capture button up in the top right near that dock button. So when it comes to personalization, you can choose any of 16.8 million colors on each individual key. So the, the, uh, the possibilities are really limitless. Um, and that's just kind of the basics. You can get into reactive effects where when you hit a key, it stays on and then fades out or it ripples out to other keys. Um, a whole lot of um, really cool things you can do with a keyboard that has that much functionality um, and looks so great. Are you thinking that would like uh, sync up with your other Chroma devices as well? Is that something that is that something that's actually possible right now uh, mm -hmm. with the Razer phone, or would that be something you'd have to develop? Yeah, so with the Razer phone right now, it doesn't have a Chrome implementation, but we are in uh, the third release of our Synapse. It's in beta right now. That's our software that really controls a lot of our lighting and our, our peripherals and our notebooks as well. Um, the latest iteration of that actually allows you to lay out on the screen where your devices are because we have a whole ecosystem of Chroma products. And then you can assign, um, instead of the wave just ending at the keyboard, it can continue on to the mouse pad or the mouse that's sitting next to it. Um, we also just announced um, with Philips Hue some room lighting that's Chroma enabled as well. So now you can expand that experience beyond your Razer devices and, and your whole room can become uh, you know, a Chroma ecosystem. I like to ask the question, who is the ideal consumer that would get the best and most benefits out of uh, this particular setup? That's a great question. I think you know people that are really trying to get the most out of their Android devices today. Um, you know our Razer phone customers. You know it's obviously a flagship kind of Android smartphone device. Um, people that have a lot of um, demands for power and performance from the phone. You know they're they have so much potential, but maybe they're limited by you know having to type on the screen and they're wanting to do long form typing, or maybe they're wanting to um, watch a, um, a movie or play a game and they want a larger screen experience. Um, so I think, you know, it's really for Android power users um, is kind of one target. Students, I think, is another great target. Um, you know, you can have your phone with you all the time. This gives you a way to kind of take notes better in class and, and have some entertainment between classes as well on a larger screen. Um, but really anyone that could benefit from enhancing their smartphone with a larger screen and a keyboard and additional battery life and storage. I can just imagine some PC gamers looking at this and being like, oh, okay, Android. Mm -hmm. What kind of games can you play on Android? Seriously. What is your answer to that question? Like, what, yeah. what and, I, and I don't know, I played a few at your, mm -hmm. your uh, suite yesterday, but like, what is your favorite game to play on Android in this sort of setup? Yeah, right now I've been um, playing a lot of Vainglory. So yeah. it's a MOBA game, um, and you know, it's a different experience with the mouse and keyboard. And I've been enjoying it a lot because you can map your abilities to the keys. Um, and I'm, I'm more familiar with PC gaming than Android gaming personally. So for me, it was a more comfortable experience. Um, so I think that's one thing. I think to the people that are questioning, you know, what about AAA titles and all that, there's a lot of solutions to get that on here. We're actually showing one at our booth right now called Shadow. Uh, it's from a company called Blade out of France. Um, and they basically have a Windows 10 PC in the cloud um, that you can rent at a monthly fee and you can have games or other content on there. Um, really amazing, low latency, great frame rates. Um, so you really can access a, a full Windows 10 gaming PC via the cloud through this device if you wanted to. Seems that I'm looking at a USB port there, and I've got Isaac asking the question, can you plug a mouse in? Definitely. You can plug a mouse in. You can also connect via Bluetooth if you wanted to, to the phone's Bluetooth uh, connection in there. Um, you could also connect other devices into that USB port, external storage, maybe a webcam, basically any USB device that supports Android. The question we're asking at CES, we want to know, is it available now, and what's the price point? It's available now for people to comment on. So really, we're at that stage where we want feedback. And that okay. really helps us design better products for the users out there. So hit us up on social media. Tell us what you think about this. Tell us what features you want to have. We really want to hear from our users. That helps us refine it even more, and hopefully someday we'll be able to bring it to market. Fantastic. This is more like at the prototype stage. Yeah. This is the first unveiling, isn't it? It's yeah, so it's the yeah. first time, and it's actually one of the few times we've actually had a concept device in our booth on the floor for people to get hands-on with. Usually it's in closed-door rooms, it's under glass and things like that. Uh, but we really, again, wanted that feedback, and we thought the best way to do it was bring the device out, show it off, and let people experience it. That's the case. Where's the best people, a place that people can reach out on social media? Yeah, so basically at Razor, pretty much on any social channel, you'll find us on there, Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, we even have our own forum, Razor Insider, that has um, a, a wealth of users on there that love to comment on our products. Um, so a lot of great information available for users and a great way for us to connect with them.
Kevin, I'm just giving you a heads up. Harrison in the chat says, oh, I'm going to hit you up all right. So <laughs> Looking is, forward to it, yeah, Harrison. Yeah, really excited to have that direct customer feedback. So yeah. I think that's really cool. Um, anything else that's happening at CES with Razor? Anything else that's happening in your showroom that you're super proud of and excited to show off? Yeah, we've got a couple other products we're showing off out there. We've got our new Mamba and Firefly uh, Hyperflux, which is basically a wireless powered mouse. Um, so the mouse pad has inductive charging capabilities, but instead of having a battery in the mouse, which adds a lot of weight to it, this is designed for first person shooter uh, players that need a really lightweight mouse. So there's no battery, it's just a capacitor in there. So you have all that wireless power, you can even lift it up for about five to ten seconds before it loses its charge, so you can move your mouse and reposition if you need to. Um, so that's one of the cooler products we're showing off. We also have a new line of audio speakers. Um, so our Nomo line of speakers, ranging from nine, uh, $99 up to $499, um, really designed for desktop gaming experiences and people that want to have a, a, a room full of sound. And to go with that room full of sound, as I mentioned earlier, the uh, Chrome integration with Philips Hue lighting. So now you can get that audio experience, you get an immersive visual experience, um, you know, and you can really uh, enjoy these games in, in a whole new level. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us here at Digital My Friends. It sounds like Razor's having another huge year at CES, which I'm excited about. Guys, speaking of things to get excited about, we are giving away things on the Digital Trends website. Jump over to digitaltrends.com forward slash giveaways. Plenty of stuff there, because you know what? Free stuff's pretty awesome, so try your luck with that one. There is still more to come with Digital Trends live from CES.